Every Tuesday, we also are joined, now Tuesday and Thursdays actually, we are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Now, talk about someone else who's been in the game. Tim Ord, I love his input, and I know all of you guys love his input as well. We are super excited to hear from him today. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Glad we're back on, and markets are working well. That's so, right, that's uh, right. It's, it's, Let's take a look at them, see where we are. Absolutely. Let me pull up chart one for you right now, Tim. Good, we're right. cooking right uh, now. Right, chart one, uh, anyhow, the second window up from the bottom is the XPX VIX ratio, and it leads the um, S&Ps. Uh, anyhow, the, the shaded, well, this green area, I, I got across the chart. Chart goes back uh, almost two years. But anyhow, when the uh, that ratio is making higher highs, which is second window up from the bottom, and the S and P's are making lower highs, the SPX VIX ratio, uh, I guess, is the dominant indicator suggesting that once that starts hitting new highs, uh, the market at some point will start to hit new highs. And I pointed out the times in the past, you know, going back to uh, that April period of 2023. Uh, S and P's, which is that first uh, shaded area off to the left, uh, the S and P's were trading sideways. That ratio was hitting higher highs. You had a mild consolidation for uh, this is a weekly chart for a couple of weeks, then finally you start breaking new highs. Same thing happened back in November of last year. The S and P's are up against the previous highs, and that ratio starts breaking new highs, and finally the, the market starts going up again. We have a similar situation with the S and P's are actually knocking on the the door of the March high here. We haven't quite uh, hit it yet, uh, but the ratio already hit a new high here last week. Uh, so we may see a little bit of resistance at the previous highs, but the ratio suggests at at some point we're going to keep making higher highs. So your midterm scale remains bullish, uh, and actually even the short term scale here. Uh, it's not even bad here, but intermediate term trend remains uh, bullish. What happens if the SP starts making higher highs and this ratio makes lower highs is when you have to worry, and that's not happening here. So we already hit new highs. At some point, the SPX is going to hit new highs according uh, to this ratio. Uh, hang on, let's flip to chart two. Yep, give me one moment here. Perfect. We have it up right now. Right. Uh, this this kind of just I look. Uh, this is a, just a short term indicator. Uh, it looks out. Uh, it's a daily uh, uh, a second window down from the top is the SPX uh, SPX tilt ratio, which is basically the SPX to bond ratio. And the top window is the ten day RSI for that ratio. And what this ratio is good for is predicting short term highs. And the highs are not usually significant. Sometimes they can pick out significant highs. But usually when that ratio gets up around 70 and higher, normally you'll have a week or two of, of, of consolidation. And all those blue lines across the chart are times when the RSI hit 70 or higher of that of the SPX tilt ratio. And if you notice, you, you'll get a, you know, a, a week or two of, of consolidation before it goes on higher and higher. And right now... Uh, we're coming in when I did this chart earlier today. We're at 50, uh, 54.20 on the RSI. So even on a short-term scale here, we're, we're not seeing any high, uh, even on the short term. And I was kind of looking at this ratio. I thought, geez, we'll, we'll start a, a pullback here. You know, I thought earlier in the week, you know, well, today's uh, Tuesday. but And we're not really seeing even short-term signs and the market, if we're up again today, which looks like we will, we're up nine days in a row, which is which extremely rare, I'll yeah. put it that way. That's almost two weeks of every day being an up day. And in the short term, uh, according to the RSI, you know, up, up around 55, um, we may go right, eat, we may go up to uh, the highs of March and eat right through them. So normally you get uh, new highs, you usually test them, kind of back away test them again and either you you create a top of some sort or you you just bang right through it and right now i have to say the march highs at the moment with the chart one and, and chart two here 
we're not seeing any signs of a high here. So I'm thinking that the market may just keep pushing higher. Um, here, here's a flip to chart three. Yes. And uh, here's, you know, this is, I, this is quite updated uh, today. But, you know, today, if we're up again today, which looks like we probably are because we're up, you know, close to half percent, we may back off for the close, but probably not. But uh, yesterday was even up. This this chart only says we're up seven days in a row, which is higher 100% of the time within five days. Where we're actually up eight days yesterday, and today will be nine days up. And I don't really have it circled here. Uh, you can't quite tell, but we're we're basically banging against the March highs mm -hmm. right now. We haven't quite touched it yet, but eyeballing it, we're probably less than half a point away from that high. So will we hit it this week? You know, there's a good chance we probably will. Uh, the VIX is, which is the second window up from the bottom, is not really giving any signs of a top, even though we did bounce up yesterday. Today we're down a little bit uh, as the market's up, which is normally what happens. And we're not too far from uh, the lows that happened back in March. So normally you get close to highs, you'll see a spike in, in the VIX first before you see a spike down in the S and P's, it's not that's not really happening here. We got the VIX gone up a little bit, but not of any consequential matter. So I'm, I'm thinking um, we may keep just pushing higher here short term. So, um, well, Tim, when we get back, no, I, I, I we actually have a question uh, for you in the den as well. Um, just asking about your source for trend. But folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Or. Welcome back, folks. Uh, this is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're with Tim Ord of the OrdOracle.com. Now, Tim, we actually have a question for you yep. in the den. Uh, one of our one of our guys in here, he asks, uh, if you have a new source for trend data, he's saying investing.com data is no longer being updated historically, and he was wondering what your source is for trend data. Uh, I do uh, SWIM, um, which is... Okay. You know, been accurate for, for what I can tell. I know uh, stock charts uh, doesn't really have an accurate trend either. But uh, the stock charts is closer. But I use uh, Thinkorswim. Uh, it's kind of a real-time trading platform through Schwab. Uh, it's free, uh, but you got to have an account at Schwab. Uh, but uh, anyhow, that's that's who I use. Uh, matter of fact, if you go if you look at chart three there, yeah, I got some tr trend data in there that. That uh, pink area I have uh, kind of shaded in there. That's all the times that trend readings were above 1.2. And if you notice, you, you get clusters. Once you start seeing panic, that panic usually continues in that area. So if you're coming off of a top real quick and the trend pops up real quick, chances are you're going in, you're going right into a low. But anyhow. Uh, Schwab has a uh, think, think or swim, but you have to have an account there to get it free. Uh, stock charts is pretty close to accurate. It's, you know, it's good enough for how I use it. So there's only two courses. Or two, that's who I use anyhow. So, Okay. Um, thank you so much. Awesome. Okay. Uh, you want to move on to next chart or is there yes. another question? I think that was the only question. Uh, let me check the host mm -hmm. chat quickly. Oh, you know, actually, Tim, we, we have a caller right now. Uh, Mark in Fort Collins has a question about uh, Trin, I believe. Uh, Mark, are you there yeah, with hey. us? Yeah, hey, this is Mark. How are you doing? Awesome, Mark. How are you doing? We'll, we'll go Good. ahead. I'm, I'm interested to hear. So I'm looking at the Trin readings for the last five days, and they seem to me to be really coming down quite a bit. They're it's like an average of less than one. Um, uh, and only like 0.5-ish the last couple of days, the two-day trend. Does that indicate anything for you on a pullback? Or Because I know before you were looking at, you know, if it was staying over like an average of 1.2 for five days, um, then the market would continue higher. Is that incorrect or correct or what? Well, yeah, actually, for some reason, the trend works better at lows than it does at tops because I've seen actually – the five-day trend get down around uh, 0 0.5, and the market still continue higher. So if, okay. uh, I, I've noticed the uh, trend has, has been. Uh, see, you see what it is right now. Um, it's like 0.51, uh, something like that. 
Yeah, at point five three on a sink or swim. I think it was close to that yesterday too. It's not necessarily bearish. You can be. Uh, I do watch the trend. Sometimes you get pullbacks. Sometimes you don't. Actually, uh, for probabilities, I wouldn't trade that because sometimes you'd okay. win, but a lot of times you'd lose. It's not a high probability trade. The once okay. the trade the, the bottom the trend. Uh, going into lows is a lot more accurate, a lot more lo- reliable than the ones that's going up. So that's what I found out through the. But they can mark yeah. highs, but it's not that reliable. Okay. Yeah, I think the other, like, Basel uses it. Um, if he gets a really high trend reading and he looks for the market to continue, like the S&Ps to maybe have a, a 10 to 10 something point bounce. And if he gets a really low trend reading, he looks for sometimes it gets a rug pull the next day. Where you know any you, you get a pullback around this number of points depending on where you get the higher the low the readings on any given day. I think yeah, around a plus yeah. two or a, yeah, you, you know point five. Yeah, you can point. You know, yesterday we point point seven eight, but yeah, this the close around point five is something to pay attention to. But usually, it doesn't predict anything. In most cases, you know, you know, maybe a slap in the face before it hits higher, but. I don't know. I, I've, I've 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 studied you know the the ups and lows, highs and lows, and all this. The five day, ten day, twenty one day, um, two day. Matter of fact, you get a two day trend that adds up to three. A lot of times, that's a bicycle right on the close because next day they don't even let you in. Uh, but okay. that works about eighty percent of the time. I can point out a couple of times that it failed, but all of them go into lows. So, uh, matter of fact, this last trade I made, I made it early. Uh, I made it on April 12th. I got long. The actual low was April 19th. The reason why I went in, you had a two-day trend that did add up to three. And I knew uh, normally the next day is a low. It wasn't the case at all. Uh, the market went down for another three or four days, which is real rare. But most times, you know, you get a three-day trend that adds up, to, or a two-day trend that adds up to three the next day. It's not that day, but the next day is the low. But that particular case, it took about four days for that low to get in. But 90% of the time, um, if you get that much panic in that short period of time frame, it's usually a, a bullish intermediate term sign, even though it's not a exact day of a low. So, But anyhow, uh, getting back to that trend of 0.5, uh, I know what you're talking about, but it, it's not reliable, I'll put it that way. Okay. Good. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for calling in. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. And guys, if you want to call in and ask questions, just, you know, call us in. Let us know. You can even ask us in the den or in the YouTube as well. And I uh, can always relay those questions to Tim. Uh, so anyways, Tim, we were looking at chart three. I know we have a few more as well. Uh, about two minutes and 20 seconds till the next break. Yeah, let's go to chart four. Perfect. This this is uh, really starting to work out pretty well. It's, it's been a kind of a a long wait, but anyhow, chart four. Uh, this is a momentum indicator. It's already gave a buy signal several months ago, and so now you want to have momentum to turn up. And uh, so we're on a buy signal, but you know sometimes these buy signals last two, three weeks. Sometimes they last two, three months. How do you know? that you're going into a multi-month, if not a multi-year rally. Well, these momentum indicators tell you what's going on. Um, this is the, the weekly GDX. The top one is the weekly GDX. The next window down is the weekly cumulative advanced decline for GDX. And, and the window below that is a cumulative up-down volume for GDX. And the bottom window is the weekly GDX GLD ratio. And so I circled in blue the times when they cross the mid Bollinger Band, and right now all three of those two indicators have crossed the mid Bollinger Band, and I guess they got to hold above the mid Bollinger Band until Friday. That's officially when it becomes that this momentum weekly indicator is kicked in. Previous times when these kicked in, you know. Uh, you know, you got a four-year span, a one-and-a-half-year span, span. Last time I gave a sell signal when all three of them kicked in was back in January of 2021. That remained uh, pretty much on a sell signal 
uh, in 2023, they, they did get above their mid-Bollinger band, which is basically the only fail signal that it had going back to uh, 2009. Uh, that turned up, it turned and it turned back down. Now we're back on a buy signal again. Uh, so, um, anyhow, it looks good. So, I'll hold. Perfect, yeah. We'll be right back, everyone, with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle currently. Uh, we got a short segment here, but we still got a chart or two left to run over. I know we were just talking about the GDX. Tim, what right, else are we the looking GDX, at? Uh, well, uh, we, we're, we just talked about the weekly, which all flipped to a buy signal. So let's go to chart five. This is a monthly. And over to the right there, I have kind of a blown up window. And the... Uh, uh, the top window is a monthly GDX. Next one down is a monthly GDX DLA ratio, which is at its Bollinger Band right now. We're smack on it. And the next one down below that is a cumulative uh, monthly advanced decline. It has closed above its mid Bollinger Band. Mm -hmm. So that's on a buy signal. Those Both those are actually on a buy signal. And the bottom window is the GDX uh, up-down volume, which is still a little bit short. That's the reason why I circled it in red. Not quite crossed it yet. But if GDX holds here or moves higher, chances are before the month's out, that will give a buy signal too. So let's flip to chart six. Yep. And this is the really short, short term. This is kind of measured. Uh, anyhow, the bottom window is the 50-day uh, average of the up-down volume. Just measures the up-down volume on a 50-day average, which is about two and a half months. When those indicator is above zero, the market is in an uptrend. And over the last month, we've pretty much gone sideways. But this indicator is well above zero. So it's not it's not backing down. It's actually remaining strong, if not moving higher on a short-term basis. That suggests we're probably going to have a sign of strength, what I call a neckline, which is the top window of GDX. We'll probably have a sign of strength through that neckline. This head and shoulders bottom, if you do the, the measurement, it comes around a, a 50, about a 50 target on GDX. You know, we're around the 35 range right now, so we've got probably another 15 points to go for that measurement. So the short term remains strong on GDX. doesn't look like there's going to be uh, any worthwhile pullback here. Love it. Tim, thank you so much for coming on, guys. This is Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. He's on with us every Tuesday and Thursday on the Tom O'Brien Show. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a uh, fantastic day. Hope you all have a great and all safe right. evening. Tim, thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, folks.